Hello, everyone, and welcome to Building Besser, the podcast where the Quantum Spin Studios team takes you behind the scenes of what it's like to build a franchise IP. We are jumping into session three of the game we're playing, Exile, and we're really excited for you to hear today's game. My name is Victory Palmasano, and I am playing Eshkal. I'm Tanner Hearn, and I am playing Kaylin. My name's John Houck, and I'll be playing Merritt. Hi, I'm your pal Jeremy Azevedo, and I'm playing Mytuk, known to his enemies as Trickshot, or his friends as a Little Trick. And I'm Anne Houck, and I'm playing the world of Vesser. Anne, take it away. We left off last week with our expeditioners starting their journey to the Sun Tower. But after an ambush by Shank Dog, uh, which listeners of the podcast might remember are some of the very, very few mammals on the continent, Kaylin decided it was time to rewind time using a cipher. The party set out once more on the path they had just followed with eyes peeled for danger. After spotting the Shank Pack on the hunt, some quick and some might say too quick thinking and illusory skills on Eshkal's part allowed them to put, set the Shank Dogs on retreat but not before one of the enterprising creatures tried to take dinner to go by latching on to Merritt's leg. What will the party do? They are on the offensive and have realized that their illusory crystals can keep the dogs at bay, but one of their own is in danger. And that's where we'll start our session. We should just start it with John going, Ah! Ah! <laughs> my leg! Oh God, my leg! <laughs> so this thing leaps out, grabs me, and I'm currently being drugged to the underbrush, correct? Mm-hmm. And we we are in initiative order. Um, so, Kaylin and Merritt, you will have the chance to do something here. If you can see in the map, this is sort of how things look right now. Oh, boy. I'm on the map. I'm surrounded by three dogs. Is that right? <laughs> I. Th you are... Let's see I'm the here. red one. Oh, yeah. No, I just switched your tokens. You are not surrounded by three dogs. Okay, just checking. You are. And we, and um, if Eshkal could give us the name of the uh, thing she produced uh, last episode <laughs> that's holding the rest of the dogs at bay. <laughs> they were crisp mind crystals. Cool. Obviously. So from, from your perspective, you've just seen you've just seen Merritt get yanked off towards the woods. Oh, geez. The proper response. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm trained in empathy, so that's what I was doing just then, okay? Uh, that's literally the first thing on my character sheet. My character's an idiot, so he was just trying not to laugh when she said yanked off. My character's a real beavis. We're entering the mode where I... It's the first combat encounter, so this is I'm going to be crunching my brain to get through this yeah a any questions you have on it too just let me know um you've got your combat tab and then you also have your abilities that you can look through as well yeah i'm ready for my turn i'm sorry jeremy i got big plans if it ever comes to it <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure there's too many dogs so i can move up to two squares you you can move up to 50 feet which is 10 squares. 10 squares. What? I don't know how I got two squares in my mind. All, all, of these, all of these other losers here can only move two squares unless they make a roll. Holy cannoli. So, or they could move 10 squares and not take an action. What if I have sprint and speed tasks relating to aim? That sprint just means it's easier for you to make that check. Ah, uh, so like movement is a action? Uh, kind of, but K Kaylin, what are you going to be doing? I'm sorry, I'm grokking all this right <laughs> now. I've downloaded some stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to look at the situation on the map and figure out what I want to do. <laughs> and I'm assuming it would be prudent to go after Merritt to either fight a dog or, if I get over there, heal him if he needs it. Can I see the dogs? Or they're hidden? You you can see uh, the ones over here very clearly. Great. Um, okay. The ones to the right of you guys on the map, mm -hmm. they're a little harder to see, but you do realize sort of as the crystals are appearing that all of the dogs are moving away from you in the crystals. Oh, thank you, Ishkal. So I'm going to embrace the bow and arrow as Tricky has 
emphatically said last time he was ready to use on all the dogs. So I think I'm going to run over behind this rock and then try to pick off one of the dogs with a recurve bow. Can you roll me a d20 and tell me if you're using any effort with that? Effort would require might? Um, no. So effort is uh, spent for whatever the check is that you're making. Since this is an accuracy, this will be speed. Okay. And then I'm trained in speed tasks made to hide or move stealth stealthily. So do I need to do anything to stealthily move behind the rock? Um, are you trying to remain hidden from the dogs? Yeah. I mean, I'm doing a ranged attack, so I'm trying to kind of give myself cover and kind of remain over there while I shoot an arrow. Cool. So we'll we'll do two speed tests. Okay. Um, the first one to see if you hit the dogs. Okay. Which will be just a regular D twenty there. And then what would if I want to apply effort to that? What does what do I do to apply effort? You spend so for you you'll spend two uh, speed points to reduce the difficulty of that roll. Because I have one edge. Mm -hmm. So it normally would be three points. Yes. I see. Okay, that's an eight. So your your arrow almost hits but does it kind of grazes off some of the scrubby underbrush there um can you give me a d20 roll to see if you remain hidden 14 you you feel pretty confident that i mean they they definitely saw something come through the brush there but there's a lot of noise right now mm -hmm. and they're panicked because of those crystals so you you're pretty confident that the shank dogs at least don't have an eye on where you're at right now. Just keep screaming, Merit. Hide, hide our location with your, <laughs> with your agony. Okay, and then what else can I do? That should be it for your turn, which brings us to Merit. What will you be doing? I yell back to Kaylin. Kaylin, reverse time again. Do it. Send us back. It's not worth it. And I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to pry the dog's mouth open to see okay. if I can get out and then run. So I grab it, and I think like. I'll harden my fingers with some, like, I'll ossify the fingers and try to pry and get my leg out. So I'll grab both its both sides of its jaw and try to pull. So I don't know if that would be an attack, I guess, to hit it. I can just say I attack, like, I'll attack it, like, I'll grab it and, like, try to rip, essentially. Yeah, but I'm trying yeah. To get, give I'm me, trying to get untangled from it. Give me a might roll for this. So oh, you'll just, you'll roll right. a d20 and tell me if there's anything on your sheet that helps this roll. Um, I have exaltation of strength, which is you apply a free level of effort for exaltation level to all tasks involving strength. Perfect. Which is jumping and dealing damage in a melee throw or attack. Mm hmm Okay, so let me roll my d20. That is a 19. Ooh! So with a 19, you will also get a minor effect. So tell me, tell me what this looks like. As as you do successfully pry this dog's jaws from from your leg, they're sunk in there. Can you tell what counts as a mi What does minor mean? What's the uh... so for for a minor effect? Um, you you can have it harm the creature. You can give some storytelling flavor to this a little bit too. Um, it could be it could be more effective, like maybe maybe as you do this, you shove the shank dog back a few feet. That's more. That's kind of what I was wondering. Like if I could, like I rip its jaw open to get my leg mm -hmm. out, and I kick to separate from yeah. it. So like I open my mouth, I kick against it, and maybe move myself back about five feet, so there's some separation. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'll I guess I'll slide back five, and then I can use. I'm going to use my movement to get closer to the crystals. Okay, and be because you are knocked down, you can only move to here because you use some of that to get okay. up. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll break myself free. Like I'll rip the dog's mouth open, kick it in the chest, and use that to roll away and then move as far as I can to try to start, get closer to the crystals that are kind of scaring them. Nice. So that brings us around to the shank dog's turn. Um, these fellas over here are going to keep moving around to rejoin with their the rest of their pack. Right behind me. <laughs> and these ones here, they actually all are going to try to snap out at Merit in a singular attack here. 
Um, so, Merritt, if you can make a speed defense test, which is, that's that's also just rolling a d20 there. Okay. Don't think I have anything that helps me with that. So, Ooh, no, that is a four. Yeah, that's that's not going to do it. You have just shoved uh, the one dog back, but se- seemingly like riled up by this. Three of them lunge at you and and bite down into uh, your hamstring and just really dig in there. And All you right. are going to take eight points of damage to your might pool. All right. Um, does any of my stuff help me with that in terms of armor or the shield? Well, I guess the shield is speed. Let def- me uh, see here. Does, does it change if it's a five? Because I have a shield. My shield does a speed well, plus one speed defense. I just saw. It uh, does not, uh, like, unfortunately, get you high enough there to avoid this. Okay. Um, and as as your as this happens to the rest of the party, you can kind of hear. Off to the left-hand side over here, there is a rustling down in the brush, as if there are some more shank dogs possibly back there, but they are unwilling to come closer to the Mind Shatter Crystals. So now, Eshkol and Lil Trick, it's your turns. Can I make another illusion closer to Merit so that they would back off? I would like to send another Mind Shatter Crystal as close to Merit as possible so those dogs back off. Sounds good. And then are you moving or doing anything else? Um, I mean, I kind of want to stay close to my my illusion. Cool. <laughs> Keeping us that, safe. That is, that is good. <laughs> okay. And little trick, it is your turn. Am I able to make a perception check before attacking? Yeah. Okay, I want to know which dog is the alpha dog. I want to know if that's apparent. So unfortunately, you you do remember in your training that there there was some writing about alphas, but it's been a largely disproven theory. There is no clear alpha here. You have to look for the one with fanny pack and snacks for the for the rest of them. Actually, yes, you have to look for the one that has brought orange slices for the rest to recover with. After canine, this. a pack of canine creatures with no alpha. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Well. Uh, I am going to use one of my torches from my pack to light an arrow and shoot it into this pack of three. Okay. Um, I Let's see. How, how are you lighting your arrow? Uh, my torches are, I'm guessing, like, strikeable like a match. What I will give you is, so your, your torches have, like, fabric and stuff wrapped around uh-huh. um, this sort of main holding arm that you've got i would allow you that you could spend a turn to prepare an arrow to light I don't and have time next for time that. fire it yeah not with this many uh, wolves around right like the, does that make sense to you guys i i will say just one aside more more than some other role-playing games some of the things that set up take multiple turns to set up do end up being worth it because combat moves a little quicker uh-huh. but it is completely up to you well, they're not gonna they're not gonna come anywhere near the crystals, so we do have time. And I do feel like in a forest with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wolves that we can see, uh, an AOE attack would be really smart. So I am going to set that up. And my plan okay. is to shoot a flaming arrow into the most tightly packed bunch when my turn comes back around again. Sounds good. So we are back up at the top of the round with Merritt and Kaylin. How many actions can I take in his turn? So you you can move and take one action. Has Merritt taken any damage? Um, Merritt has taken quite a bit of damage to his might pool. Yeah, I took uh, eight damage to my might. Okay, so I'm going to run uh, kind of right by the crystals. Mm-hmm. And then I'm next to Merit now, and I'm going to use Healing Touch. This is a difficulty to intellect task, which I don't know what difficulty to means. That is all I need to know. That means you need to roll a six. Oh. There we go. There we go. A seven. So then I need to roll a six-sided die. And then is there anything I can do to increase whatever I roll 
expend um, points to increase the healing value? I, I would say you can spend effort to increase it by one. And then how do I spend effort? Uh, that you would expend three points from uh, your intellect pool. So that goes down to two, I think, because of the edge. So mm -hmm. sure, I'll use two intellect points to increase my roll by one. And then let's see what we get. There we go. Three added one is four total points back to merit, presumably. But what what does your healing touch feel like to the person getting healed? I mean, I only rolled a how seven. I the, how, how... So I don't know if I actually get to inform the the narrative here. I mean, you you always get to inform the narrative here. You just tell me what what does a seven like barely successful heal look like? <laughs> Where are you hurting the most, Merit? Um, probably the leg that the dog bit. Okay, so <laughs> where <laughs> you had who would have guessed? <laughs> I, could, I couldn't really remember. Weird. I couldn't remember if there was anything beyond the, the, the leg bite. The, the blood coming down my shin is the. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to say that, like, it did work. So, like, you see you see your leg kind of begin to heal where there's, like, bite marks. And, and the blood that's there, I think it'd be kind of cool if it starts kind of retreating back into your body, too. So you have, like, less blood on your leg now, and you can see it moving. Now, because it's not like a... 18 or 19 as a role uh we'll just say that it it's not like some sort of stop motion quick retreat time lapse thing that's like ah it it's just you could but you can tell like oh there's like less blood flesh is healing um you still have like i think half your damage remaining so like yeah you still have a couple of tooth bites in there um say, I, I, and then as basically a flesh mancer uh merit thinks that's cool as shit so uh, and then I guess I would ask you, Merritt, do you feel anything? You saw that. Do you feel anything, temperature or otherwise? I think I feel the the warm the warmth of Kalen flows through me. Uh, I think it's like a slight like like a slight warming sensation. I would assume, and especially if it's going back in. Like I feel like the blood would be like going back in, and it's warm, so it'd be kind of this reverse flow of like blood up the leg would be a weird sensation. But I think that's it. I mean, we can check with our local scientist here. A uh, scientist would, if blood was outside the body, would it? I would it be warm or cold going back in? It it'd be colder. I mean, if unless it was because it cooled the outside air, just like it would lose. Well, I guess that's what I mean. So, if you're feeling yeah. warmth, but would you also feel cold, like cold blood? I bet Kalen rewarmed it before it went back in. Well, that's he, he true. He got it back up to that 96, 98.6 for me. I like it. I like how, how well... Uh... What a good friend. That's really thoughtful, <laughs> man. Mm -hmm. I know. It's about comfort when you're repairing tooth bites. Service with a smile. And then now I'm behind Merit next to the Mind Shatter Crystal Illusion. Mm-hmm. Did our guide do anything? So, so Vejmirna has not done anything yet but looks like she is she is preparing to do something should things turn okay so she's I just, not going to need to after my turn well i kind of look back at her galen looks back at her because she's right behind me because i notice she hasn't done anything yet and so i'm just looking what do i can i see anything that she's doing i mean she she looks like she is ready to go and was test like sort of testing the water here to see if you needed someone else to step in or if you've got this. I think her job is to give us the rope with which to hang ourselves, kind of. That's what it seems like. Yeah. Don't take it too personally, man. You you would know that if if things turn, Vejmirna is jumping in because Vejmirna is also not surviving a pack of shank dogs on her own. And right. this like part part of her job is letting you experience things but also being here as a safety net okay we're we're on a field trip with the teacher is what you're saying we got it so merit what do you do you have just been healed can we tell from the oh wait no these are more uh shatter crystals here so they're probably not going to get too much closer i will step 
back beside Kaylin and the crystal, so I'm not right by the dogs mm-hmm. now. I will at the dog that bit me uh, first. I'm going to lash at it. Um, so lash is a two intellect points. So I have an edge. So it'd be one, and that is. You augment your attacks with arcs of energy, telekinesis, or by altering your physical form. For the next round, your melee attacks can target a creature or object within short range. Awesome. I think I'll step behind or step beside Kalen, and I think I'll like angle my wrist back, and I'll just use like an ex- like kind of an extension of my bone. You just see the radius and ulna shoot into two bony spears. And I just aim for trying to skewer the dog that's the one that the one that lashed onto me, which I think is this front middle dog here. So I just try to like basically punch him with those bony landmarks. You just see these two long cortical bones shoot out of the wrist. Rad. Give me give me a might roll here. All right. And are you spending effort? You know, I want this to work. So, yeah, I'm re- I'm really fr- I think I'd be I'm really frustrated. This dog that just bit me twice. So I'm. Going to expend some effort here okay. and aim for it. So effort lowers the difficulty, correct? Mm-hmm. 17. Oh, yeah. No, you absolutely skewer the shank dog. All right. It is It is fully stuck on there. And my melee attacks are medium weapons, so that's mm-hmm. f- uh, they're four damage. Yeah, this, you you can tell you have done some serious damage to this shank dog. He is not looking good, and he is now hanging off of your elongated bone projection. All right. That's so metal. You should keep it. Make, like, a hat out of it or something. If we kill this dog, it's going to be my next wardrobe. Oh, it ain't surviving. You break its jaw, too, also. I mean, this thing is a mess. Specifically, that dog is my new enemy in this game. <laughs> so we've got... It is, it is the shank dog's turn. The ones that were currently on your right-hand side are continuing their retreat far away from these Mind Shatter Crystals. They they don't want to be anywhere near this. Yeah, get in the um, cluster, you dummies. You've got these ones here are, are moving back. And actually, these ones aren't super together. It's just they're at, they're at the edge of the map there. Um, however... This this poor guy here is fully stuck on your bone. So he cannot move. He's kind of scrabbling and scratching against that, trying to unimpale himself. Um, and with that, it is Eshkol and Lil Trick's turn. What would you like to do? Are we still worried about this one shank dog that's closest to us? Current, currently, this, this one is impaled. <laughs> not not looking great for that. Not yeah, not not the most credible threat. Okay. Shank dog skewer for the barbecue mm-hmm. today. And I guess is this called a perception check where like do I know if my mind shatter crystals move with us? Do they stay? Can we like move as a party with the crystals away from the shank dogs and keep moving into the forest? They are stationary. I would al- okay. I would allow you to recast as you move. Okay. And then do we know enough about the shank dogs to know that like as long as those cr- – wait, I think the crystals only stay for like 10 seconds or something. Mm-hmm. No, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Um, so that gives us enough time then to keep moving as long as I can recast them as we move. Do I know what direction we're supposed to go, or does Vejmirna need to lead us? Um, give me an intellect check here. That just means I roll. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, you you're pretty sure that just south of this mind seed crystal is the direction that you've been trying to head. So I recommend that we all start heading south and as many mind shatter crystals am I as I'm allowed to cast. I would like to cast those as we move. The only thing I will say here is um, just to be mindful for your party, the illusions do disappear if you move more than an immediate distance away. So it's more than two squares. Okay, I have a question then about my maybe eminent flare mm-hmm. may do can i use that to like keep the dogs away 
while we move and I throw crystals? You could you couldn't do that in the same action. You could absolutely okay. use the imminent flare to keep them back. Okay. Your your best bet there is probably to get the party all gathered together again and move as a unit as you recast crystals. They all seem to be moving in the opposite direction anyways, so it would just be slow it would be slow going to move with this method. It would be slow going to move with my crystals um, method. Yeah, because you, you would be sort of stopping, recasting, moving 10 feet, stopping, recasting. I see what you're saying. Okay. Can I talk to Eshkol? Or are we allowed to speak? You know what, sure. Uh, Ta- you, you can go ahead. <laughs> Offic- official ruling. <laughs> can Eshkol, like, cast her illusion onto an object that we carry with us? Hmm. Oh, that's clever. How is it, how, how is it attached is it attached to like a blade of grass on the ground and we're just like, or is it attached it is, to... It is conjured in a physical space. I would say with a check, if you spend experience, you could try to focus your emanation on a singular object instead of a space. I gave her an XP. So we, mm-hmm. it's up to you, Eshkol. If I'm allowed to do that, that sounds great. Yeah. So I guess you'd have to pick, like, what object do you want to cast it on? Do you have something that seems... You have a funny little hat on? Mind Shatter Crystal hat. I'm not hat. wearing anything. Can I cast it on an object on someone else? Actually, I'm I'm looking here, too, and you can keep it moving with you if you continually use an, op- use an action to move. You just won't be able to do anything else sort of as your party's moving. Well, my other thought was to do an eminent flare to keep the dogs back so that we weren't worried about the crystals and we can all just hightail it out. I mean, they are actively moving in the opposite direction of where we're about to go. So I think we're already in a good place. We may be able to just kind of like send them running, is my feeling. Keep them moving. Herd those little doggies. Oh, okay. Uh, I just realized something. Um, Mind shatter crystals can burst from someone's head. So putting the illusion on someone's head would be cool. Yeah. Can I put it on Lil Trick's head? You know what? If you do this, I will actually give you an XP if you make Mind Shatter Crystals explode from Lil Trick's head. <laughs> I would like to do that. I would yeah. like to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll assist if that even is if a thing in the game system. Tell me, what, what does this look like? Uh, what does it look like? It looks like maybe some fireworks. Nice. I'm thinking that, but I'm also wondering if anything else might come to mind. As they burst forth, it's like a... Oh, like like fireworks that then coalesce in like this fragmented sort of crystalline, almost like coming out of his crest? Exactly. So little trick, can you like just act crazy and really hostile and then and then the dogs will chase you and not us? What? No, just kidding. <laughs> Have them chase them. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting um I'm getting lots of thoughts and messages coming to my mind right now. Little trick can ha- can can have this on his head and then he can pretend to bite Merritt's leg so that the dogs think that Merritt's also. I mean, I can I can really I can really ham it up when it's my turn. Remember the rabies <laughs> metaphor? Mm-hmm. You have to act like you got it. You got the rabies, the magic you rabies. Have to draw. You have to act insane. I I love this. So Roll it really sounds like for how much drool is coming out of your mouth. Little trick. Yeah. Give me give me your best rabid runja. Okay, or, first or of all, I didn't I didn't waste my turn setting up this flaming arrow to not use it, but I will humor <laughs> you as long as it doesn't waste my alter, my whole turn. Uh it but won't I make waste the turn contact. or the arrow. Okay, great. I make eye contact with whatever wolves are looking my way, uh, and I open my eyes up as big as I can, and I go, (laughs) and jump around on all fours like a maniac. We're sorry, listeners, that you also had to experience that. (laughs) But also, you're welcome. You really sold the crazy there. (laughs) Yeah, I like it. Um, Effective. Let's see. Give give me a roll here to see how convincing this is. Okay. Because I, I want to see exactly what zest you're putting on this. It is a 20. Oh, my gosh. Well, then. Yeah, buddy. Can you... Tell tell me tell me what exactly happens because you you can you can juice this up because you have rolled a 20. You can add some like extra stuff to this. Purple fireworks are shooting from my head. 
mm-hmm. foam is dripping down my chin and out through my clenched teeth as I scream and howl at these what are they called what dogs shank dogs <laughs> shank dogs my eyes are literally literally bulging out of my head bloodshot freakish insane uh fluids coming out of every hole uh i look like the most diseased horrible freakish thing they've ever seen uh my claws are extended the the shank dog that's hanging off the hooks of our friend Merritt uh wets himself in fear as the rest go running off as quickly as they can, tails between their legs, sobbing <laughs> in I, fear. I will also give you this. As as these sort of crystalline fireworks shoot out of you, and you've, you've sort of beefed this up with your own emanation too, some of them look like they hit the impaled shank dog, who flinches and at a combination of like being obviously impaled isn't, isn't going to be giving great biofeedback there and the peeing himself and all of that this shank dog is also kind of convinced that he has been infected as well and so like he is also howling and and trying to writhe off of this bone spike to get away and and that is that is adding to this even more of the the shank dogs think that their pack has been contaminated all right well i think that's the the job done ladies and gentlemen these dogs ain't coming anywhere near us after this. So uh, I put my arrow back into my quiver and I light a cigarette on my uh, torch instead <laughs> and I wink at a shawl <laughs> and turn around and walk away. You walk exactly 10 feet away because that is how far you may walk right now. <laughs> and despite <laughs> how much Eshgal is annoyed by Lil Trick, <laughs> she's also pretty pleased. She's impressed. That was some pretty good teamwork. Good job. Yeah. yeah. So we we are back up and around to Merritt and Kaylin. Merritt, you now have this absolute mess of a shank dog. What are you yeah, doing? I'm t- I'm torn now because I'm wondering if I actually have to put uh, my took down because he's rabid. That was convincing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, so th- this dog, I think like that's our that's a good cue to leave. So I'm gonna I'll lash again, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna lash basically and just like rip out and just try to like hopefully kill it, but leave it like severely wounded so it's not going to chase us at any point again. Um, so, um, so if I'm impaled now, I'm basically gonna roll to try to like damage it on the removal, and then cool. I'm gonna start moving away from the large pack as. Hopefully they're running away from us here. Nice. Kaylin, um, what are you going to do? And can you give me any feedback on like, I don't know enough about shank dogs to know like if mm-hmm. we can start walking away or not. Like, is that even a thing to try or is that foolish? Or maybe I ask, so, I ask, I ask I, I'm going to ask the guy. She guide, told us we should be heading we... south and the dogs are moving north. She did say that. So, okay. So then I'm going to ask the, I'm going to ask the guide, can we get out of here or do we have to finish them off? So you you turn around and Vejmirna is actually now like rolling on the floor or the ground behind you, chuckling at, at what has been happening. She looks up at you and says, as long as we keep the illusion going, they won't come near us. They won't. I forgot what voice I did for Vejmirna for a second. Hold on. Uh, as, as long as you keep the illusion going, they won't come near us. We we can probably start moving away here. I'd wager they're not going to want... Uh, that other dog there catching up to them either. I guess I'm wearing these crystals for the rest, <laughs> well, I, the rest I, of our walk. I, I, I'm going to say put them, <laughs> put them on all of us. So give us all crowns of crystals and we'll walk around with crystals on our heads. I was thinking we should start a band called Crystal Crowns just because that sounds like a cool name. I don't know if any of you guys play instruments. I sure don't, but it would be cool, right? It would be cool. <laughs> can I do crystal that? Crystal Crowns, baby. If I, if I can do that, I do it. Um... You, I would say it's it's going to be hard to keep it on an item moving. Like this was already a little bit of a stretch for okay. your emanation. Okay. Um, uh, what I will give you is you'll know, you'll have to make a roll to do it again on Jeremy. Like, but you won't have to spend XP. But it will be slightly easier. Okay. Than it than it would have been previously because you you succeeded. Oh, you don't have to do it yet. This is oh. once you start moving. Because every ten minutes, this 
will go away. Yes. Um, but yeah, you can either use an action as you move to keep an illusion moving with you, or you could try to practice casting it on an object, like little trick, and and get better and better at that skill. Um, and and with that, combat actually ends here. You do notice that the shank dog that had the unfortunate uh, end of bone being spike. stuck onto a giant bone spike is trailing after the rest of the pack. Um, previously, from what you had heard, a lot of the the sounds you heard in the woods were a couple of shank dogs sort of staying away from the crystal, but staying still. Uh, it looks like the fear of their pack mate actually has them running a little bit further. And so you feel you feel confident that you can take a minute to sort of regather yourself before moving along. I want to do something crazy. Uh oh. Tell me about it. <laughs> How hard is it to train a shank dog? <laughs> um This dog is obviously hurt, and in any Hallmark movie yeah. that we've seen, if you if you heal an animal, there is a greater chance that they will have affection for you. Yeah, but buddy, it is like limping along after the other ones who are all afraid that it's going to get them sick so it's kind of like already doing its job for us if it goes if it goes if it goes with them they're probably going to find a way to kill it because they like it's it's over so so i'm like kaylin i will say i genuinely hate that dog that that dog is my least favorite dog. It's a redemption arc, Merritt. We have so you, to. You humans are such suckers you know no, for mammals, um, man. I I had a list. Freaking ridiculous! I just want a pet. That's go, the dog. Here. I had a list of things that I had just written down that I hoped would happen at some point. And so, uh, Kaylin, you are going to get an experience point because I I told myself if anything on this list happened, it it would be rewarded. And one of the things was uh, for the players to try to make a pet. Domesticate a shank dog. Uh, I I had ideas that I thought you might go for. Didn't think it'd be this one. Totally didn't think it'd be this one. But I am okay. Very but I need. Proud to, of I this. need to. I need. I'm going to ask the guide. Like, are yeah. these? Can you domesticate one? You want to try that now? And you're you're watching. It's it is not moving fast. It is very limpy. Um, Th- that's that's the opportunity you, that I'm seeing. I mean, exactly. That thing is gonna slow us down, dude. No, I'm gonna heal it. I'm, I'm, the point is, I'm going to heal it. It will feel good about that. So it will both be faster, and I can. And train then all it. the ones that are running away from it are gonna be like, "Oh, that one's not sick. Let's come back." It's like, what are no, you doing? No, no, because not, it thinks that we're consuming the, it. Yeah, the, we're we're both domesticating a dog and they should be more afraid of us because we're also about it's to going eat. to be constantly terrified by the crystal crowns that we have yeah uh may- maybe you should make it like dead a blindfold and a muzzle if if you try this um i mean you can you can restrain one there i'm no bigger than three tusk crabs stacked on top of each other, but... Are they good to eat? Why would I waste my time eating this? <laughs> Fair point. There's other food that doesn't want to bite me. Uh, I, yeah, but I, where's the challenge in that? I mean, yeah, I, I could get it. There's there's a little bit of excitement there. I mean, you could you can try it. Honestly, I get I get time and a half if we are out here over a certain amount of uh, days. So if you want to go for it, by all means. Okay, I'm just looking for abilities to see if it helps. I will give you uh, your empathy might be able to help as well as the fact that the shank dog has been separated from its pack and is wounded. Well, I the also have karma, which says an act of kindness may moderate a situation okay. and lead to new opportunities. So, <clears throat> rec- but it's a recovery role. I don't know if that means that there has to be a, something that happens and Let it's a me. response. This is Kaylin being the true pack alpha. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to use one of your recovery roles um, to gain the aid of a stranger. 
Do which, I know this shank dog? You you don't. You're right. You don't know this shank dog. This the, shank not dog as well as Merritt does. Um, <laughs> what what I will say is, you will need to make a series of checks as you travel along to work with this shank dog. If you even succeed in the beginning. Oh yeah, I've been stacking the XP though. So okay. This is, this G- is give me be a, give the, me a roll. The good college for, try. For and you're going to tell me if you are going to use any abilities or effort. Well, or I want I want to use karma. Okay. And I want to use uh obviously my ability of healing touch because I'm going to heal it. Mm-hmm. Which I would suspect it might be happy about. Yeah. And then empathy, like you said I'm trained in empathy. So I guess that helps me discern its disposition. So, okay. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna do a roll, and then based on those things, you're gonna tell me if it makes it a little bit easier. And th- that will definitely make it easier. Okay. And then w- what am I doing? I'm gonna heal it, and then I'm gonna s- I'm gonna try to see what is this roll doing? Is it you, you testing if I'm healing to... it or testing it if it if I will be able to like. Soothe it. it enough to not want to immediately attack you. At this point, you'll definitely want to restrain it in some way, okay. with like a muzzle something. You could also ask a companion for help with this, as well as the things you're. Yeah. So Eshkal, will you help me handle it? I'm gonna look for in my backpack some rope to fashion a leash and a muzzle. As as you are doing this, this sad, sad dog is just crawling like in two foot intervals, just slowly away from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna move over there now. Okay. To to the dog. It is Eshkal, are you going to help me or am I gonna do it by myself? Bro, please don't help him. Yeah, I can't get behind <laughs> this. Okay. I think this is slowing us down. So Zero of us Sorry. support you on this one. You're but... on your own. Listen, I'm just I, getting I'm getting a friend in later. <laughs> this is going to be Lassie. We're going to be in the well and Lassie's going to go get us help. So I hope you're right. I want this to work so bad for you. I've set it where I think it needs to be set, but I I want you to do well. Okay, well no one's helping me, so that's Can you at least shout encouragement to get like half a point of reduction of difficulty? <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Okay. Half a point can, easier. Can I can I intimidate <laughs> the dog so it's more docile? Just like I'm not gonna be nice to it. Okay, come on, Nat twenty. Give, give me your give me your roll. Yes, yes. That's oh pretty God. close. <laughs> that is pretty close. Okay, this I feel like this is one of the rare times I should allow you behind the screen. To, to know that if you had not been able to stack as many things on this, it was going to be impossible for you to roll. That's what, that's what empathy does, folks. If you're listening to this, just let empathy into your heart and you too can have a shank dog waiting at your door. Uh, give, me, give me a d6 to see how much you heal this shank okay. dog for. From Vesser Studios, How to Train Your Shank Dog. It's a four. Okay. So he's he's not happy. Uh, Pets at the vet are hardly ever happy. Yeah, he he seems pretty wary. Like, but he, there there is a sense that he's regarding you all as as maybe a rival pack kind of deal. I was hoping um, for that actually. Not not going close to crazy Runja with with the shatter. Um, and he is Good. currently covered in pee. That's okay. Hey, we'll, we'll, fix, that. we'll fix that later. We uh, gotta get this dog a bath. We, ha- we have a we have a river runja here who can take it into the river. I'm not. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. So it's healed. So do I need to roll to like muzzle it and leash it? Yeah. Uh, when when you do this, um, you will actually get some help here from Vejmirna, who is okay. not going to inter- intervene with the the initial here, but. You what what you are doing is funny enough that if this works, I can get like free drinks from the ether for a little bit if I tell this. So I'm I'll help you uh I'll help you tie this guy up. All right. Do I need a roll? Or is it is she just helping enough and she's strong enough that give give me a roll to see to see how well you are doing this. Okay. 
six, I think. It seems passable if if there's like something that occurs where the shank drug is trying very hard to get away. It, there might it there's some things that could be done better, but overall it looks like it it's decently like you've you've made a makeshift little harness here. Okay. And then really quick, did I spend any points for any of this? You did not. Okay. So then I'm going to uh, just say, hey, can someone check the harness? Let's just make sure this leash actually is holding and we can refix it if it doesn't look good. <sighs> I'll do it. And then we can get on the road. I think I think I will do it, little trick. I am far better at safety than you are. I don't trust anyone but myself to check this harness. So can I just check it or do I need to roll something to check it? How are you checking it? I am... Uh, pulling on it i'm inspecting it check check all the knots eshkol make sure they're tight yeah thanks i don't need any help give there. Give, give me an intellect roll here to examine this work okay are you gonna expend some of your credibility points like kaylin did i'm not gonna involving say yourself in this at all whatsoever it's a three so we're, we're not in good uh this is a total crap shoot. so the harness does does the three mean that that I didn't do a good job, or the three mean the harness is not the the up three to par. means that you you're too honestly distracted right now with what's going on. You don't know. Merritt's like, good. why didn't you heal me more? You're healing the shank dog. <laughs> yeah, it, I will say, a very good thing that you did not have a uh, Jeremy go over as a little trick. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, Crystal Crown. What do you want to do? Uh, remember, Esh, call that in 10 minutes, your crystals will expire. Let's march in the opposite direction of those dogs, baby. Yeah, I've been wanting to get out of here. Let's mm -hmm. move it. Let's go. Okay. And how how are you uh, arranging your formation with your dog who's terrified of mind shatter crystals? Your fake mind shatter crystals and everyone. Well, either I'm going to have to be in the front with the dog in the back or vice versa. I think if we're heading away from the dogs, Lil Trick should be in the back. Keep them from coming towards us. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. K Kaylin, Kaylin can lead the, the way with the dog. Yeah, but yeah, you guys need sense. to keep up. Let's go. We're going at a quick, a quick clip here. Yep. If that dog can't keep up, I'm sorry. And then are, are you casting... Um, pretty much continuously to keep the illusion moving with you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so. So yeah. that that means Ash call that's essentially what you will be focusing on as everyone is moving here. Um everyone else, what will you be doing as as you kind of go along? Um can I walk I I think if I can walk near Ash call to kind of like she's kind of the uh vip right now because we need her to remain upright and focused on these crystals so i think i'll mm -hmm. can i be doing like running perceptions to make sure nothing's coming and i'm going to be standing near ash call to kind of run defense if needed absolutely uh give me an intellect check to see how this is going as you're moving along and you you do notice with this that seems to be what vejmirna is doing as well so you'll you'll have a second set of eyes helping you out with this okay the only thing I have for intellect is I'm trained in intellect tasks related to emanation. So I guess if we perceive emanation, I have a advantage there. But other than yeah. that, it'd just be normal. Okay. Yeah. That is a six, a okay. rousing six. I will keep that in mind. So you you are moving along, sort of with with the setback of you know having to backtrack a little bit and all of this. It is getting uh, up into the afternoon. Um, you start to notice a little bit as the scrublands transition a bit more. There's they're starting to be uh, what looks like tree stumps a little bit, um, and you can see that the road sort of forks uh, ahead of you and trails off. This looks like a point where, if the if the if ground had been sort of worn from expeditioners previously. This looks like a point where people started to go a little bit their separate ways and there's no longer a clear path to follow. Um, 
So you, you've got to a point where you need to decide which way you want to go. And you can see there's some open grasslands uh, down to the east uh, that look pretty exposed. Um, and then there is also a mounting uh, forest ahead of you. Okay, as a ranged fighter, personally, I almost feel more comfortable going through the place that is more exposed because as long as we can see what's coming, uh, we can probably get it before it gets us. If we are going through a, a dense forest, um, you know, ranged combat becomes slightly less useful, maybe. I, I get that. Um, v Vejmirna seems to be considering as well. I don't what do you think, Vejmirna? Think... I mean, I've I've been to this area before here. If we've got that pack maybe coming behind us, at some point she's not going to be able to cast any more illusions. They won't follow us into the woods. Well, woods it is. Unless you guys want to flip for it or something. I mean, we can. If if we go if we go the other way, we might be able to outpace them a little bit, but not with this dog here. Not with our new lassie. I don't. I don't trust it. It's probably gonna like alert its friends or something. Be like, hey man, you know, like the. It's not even. It's not even real. The crystal uh, crown. I don't know how they communicate or whatever, but I don't know, man. It just seems like a bad idea to bring this thing with us at all. <laughs> at all, let alone into an open space. So yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm a. I'm gonna advise you, Kaylin, to maybe not name that thing quite yet. We might not want to get too attached to it. A single teardrop rolls down Kaylin's cheek. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. His lip quivers. Uh, <laughs> I think I think the forest is is uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some perils there too. But I think we're gonna be yeah. So if you're if you're moving that way, you can see there's a little bit of a clearing between where you are now and the actual for real start of the forest. Al almost like um, it's difficult for the more brushland plants to even grow up against it. Um, you see a lot of like thorny stumps and very like blade leaf succulent trees uh, starting to form at the edge um, as you enter into the forest and look around your eyes adjust to the light because it's, it's decently dark in here. Um, there's a, there's a low canopy that's, that's fairly dense above you and you're surrounded by squat trees with deep purple dr uh, trunks that gradate into broad green leaves They're very much um kind of kind of looks like like a cypress tree with more like thick succulent leaves as opposed to like a, a normal like deciduous tree leaf um spiky knees of the same purplish hue covered in spines litter the forest floor and you notice like as as you're looking around you would expect to see um, a lot of coverage on the forest floor of like smaller plants, brush, things like that. And there, there really is none of that. Um, additionally, like that sort of damp woodsy smell that you would expect seems to be lacking here. Uh, instead, a, a light smell almost similar to like grapefruit fills the air. Is there something up with these trees? Are they like sucking the life out of everything around them or something? Do you want to explore a tree? Yeah. Then yeah, give give me actually give give me an intellect uh, check here to see what you what you notice about these trees. Okay, it's well, a nine. It's a nine. Yeah. So when you when you walk up to these, you notice that they're they seem to be out out of bits of it. There's leaking like a like a bright red sap. Mm -hmm. Um, and the the trees themselves seem to be covered in like these small little hairs. And for someone who is trained in expeditioning and exploring, your sort of gut instinct with this little trick is that you don't want to touch this. Yeah, this doesn't seem good. Like it, it looks like the kind of thing that, you know, al almost like the, the little hairs on this tree are almost like fiberglass-ish mm -hmm. to, to give like a, a comparison for earth side listeners um so you, you would you would guess that there might be like some irritation if you sort of handled these trees i think people used to make insulation out of this um and it got a lot of people sick so uh it's not you're not allowed to use it anymore 
Yeah, you you do you do remember hearing that, or at least being told this. Yeah. Um. Additionally, like as as you're kind of looking up these trees, occasionally on some you can see these like uh, bright green, sort of like smooth leather texture looking almost, or like a, like a fruit skin orbs sort of dotting up some of the trunks on these trees. Yeah, those things are definitely alive. So uh, you guys want to go to the uh, open plain now, or... Is that something we would know the name of by any chance? Like, that, I assume we know, yeah, like, you, basic berries and trees of the area, but... You're a bookish short of fella, so uh, give, give me a roll here to see if, you, if you've if you done anything studying these trees. Not much. I Picture books only. I, I was going to say, but with with the skill set you have, uh, Seven will actually give you some information here. Um, what you would recognize, actually, what you are walking into right now is a forest known as the Rashwood. Um, and the Rashwood is a frequently traversed path by adventurers. Um, so it's, it's decently well documented. Uh, what What's one thing that you remember about this is uh much like some fungus or other trees this isn't uh made up of individual plants it's actually a single emergent plant growing out from some sort of central tree um over over the centuries it's uh shaped its environment to be particularly like hostile to things that would seek to like destroy it and things like that however you do know a lot of adventurers come this way because the larger predators just will not enter the rash wood oh so we just need to be like chill and the trees will leave us alone probably keep your torches in your bags people yeah and as as you sort of have this realization about the rash wood and all of that uh, you're overcome with this with this sudden tiredness that seems to sink deeper than yourself, almost as if it's coming from an outside person or source. Uh, and that's where we'll end our session today because the real world players are getting a little bit tired and need a break. All right. We'll see you next week. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye, guys. 